Haitian Revolution was a social and political upheaval in the French colony of Saint Domingue, which shared the island of Hispaniola with the Spanish colony of Santo Domingo. During the period from 1791 to 1804, in, in 1791, slaves and free people of color rebelled against French rule and in 1804 declared their country's independence under the original Arawak name of Haiti. The Haitian Revolution was, along with the American Revolution, one of the most significant and dramatic challenges to European colonialism in the New World, and historians widely regard it as a milestone in the history of Africans in the Americas. The Revolution is, in fact, the only successful large-scale slave insurrection in history and it is often seen as initiating the decline of the slave trade. The original French inhabitants made a living selling leather and beef products, the cattle originally left behind by the Spanish who were the first colonizers to settle on the island. But eventually the indigenous peoples of the Caribbean were enslaved by Spanish and French colonists to create a labor force. Because of the diseases that the Europeans brought with them, the majority of the native population died off and the need for a new source of labor became apparent. The use of plantations was widespread. Haiti produced 40% of Europe's sugar and 60% of its coffee. Sugar plantations were extremely profitable and huge amounts of slaves were imported to meet the demand under harsh conditions where they were worked to death. The French exceeded the Spanish in terms of controlling the plantation and the slaves on them. Imported slaves from Africa to make up for the devastation of European diseases on the indigenous population. By 1789, there were 50,000 slaves, which made up the overwhelming majority of the island and greatly outnumbered their white counterparts. Social stratification was based on inherited position rather than personal merits. At the top were the white colonists, or the Blancs, who owned most of the property. Below them were light-skinned and dark-skinned Blacks. Although they were often members of free and educated pauper class, the system blocked them from occupying many public offices. The bottom layer of colonial society consisted of slaves, who were people of sub-Saharan African origin and or descent. The issue of race was very complex in Haiti at this time. The poor whites despised the wealthy whites because they believed they should be paid as much respect and have the same social opportunities. Mulattoes saw slaves as below them, even though they were both of African descent, and they envied to gain as much superiority and power as the whites. Free people of color would also abuse slaves and saw them as barbaric. Different social classes were created accordingly to the multiple race combinations. The mixed race people struggled to achieve equality with the Europeans and at least to have some social acceptance and rights. Race combinations such as Mesito and Mulatto struggled considerably with basic human treatment and rights. Aspirations of the enfranchised to achieve the economic and social levels of the Europeans was the cause of the revolution. The Haitian Revolution was the result of a long-time struggle on the part of the slaves in the French colony of Saint Domingo, but also propelled by the mulattoes who had faced the trials of being denoted as semi-citizens. Rich white landowners had great autonomy for the co colony and fewer economic restrictions on trade, but were against freedom for people of color. Poor white class sought equality of citizen with rich whites, against equality for people of color. Free slaves and people of color wanted more rights, and slaves fought for personal freedom. Women fought in combat, and many women were also served as spies. Colonial economy was export-driven and dominated by agriculture and trade. St. Domingue, with its tropical climate, was developed as a coffee and sugar-producing colony and sustained many large and profitable plantations. Sugar and coffee eventually became two of the world's most traded commodities, and St. Domingue produced over 60% of the world's coffee and 40% of the world's sugar. This made the island France's most profitable plantation colony. To meet the growing needs of this plantation system, St. Domingue's colonists continuously expand, expanded the number of slaves. In fact, there was an estimated 500,000 slaves at the time. The amount of slaves brought from Africa to Haiti was so high, it is estimated that 90% of the population was consisted of slaves. The social imbalance was a long-term cause of the revolution, as this class, which was re repressed, revolted against such harsh life conditions. For decades, Haiti had been experiencing exploitation of its resources, land, and the people, which weren't even native to the region. The economic prosperity of the country had been fueling this revolution by consistently adding to the social inequality. The economic position of St. Domingue itself was very prosperous, however, the means in which they conquered such economic power led to a social instability, further leading to a revolution. 
You would think that the wealth of the colony would promote permanent stability and prosper, right? Well, it was good for business, but definitely not good for the social equality of the lasting buildings. The triangular trade was a significantly important process of exchange between the Americas, Europe, and Africa. America gave sugar, tobacco, cotton, and coffee to Europe, which gave manufactured goods to Africa, which in turn sent slaves to the Americas. In result, the colonial economy fueled the social imbalance that led to the revolution. In the 18th century, St. Domingue, as Haiti was then known as, became France's wealthiest overseas colony, largely because of its production of sugar, coffee, indigo, and cotton generated by an enslaved labor force. The French Revolution was an important factor that shaped the Haitian Revolution. Political turmoil in France weakened colonial administrations in St. Dominique and various groups of the island began fighting amongst themselves. The French Revolution, along with the American Revolution, set precedents for overthrowing an old regime. In fact, it had a deep effect on the philosophical underprintings of Haitian society. One aspect that was drastically changed by the ideas of the French Revolution was the role of free African Americans. The Declaration of Rights of Man and the Citizen of 1789 led several mixed-race leaders, including Vincent Ober, Henry, Gregory, and Julian Raymond to petition the French National Constituent Assembly for Equal Rights. On May 15, 1791, the National Constituent Assembly declared that the free African Americans had the right to vote. Though it did not apply to the slaves, the white colonists resident to this new law was cited by the insurgents as one of the causes of the, of the 1791 slave revolt that eventually became the Haitian Revolution. The General Emancipation Decree had the desired results. It prevented further clashes and drew many of the leaders of the blacks to the French side, including rising leader Poussaint Dominique Poussaint Louvertine. Born into slavery on May 20, 1743 in the French colony of Saint Dominique, Louverture was the eldest son of an African prince who was captured by enslavers. At a time where revisions to the French Code Noir, Black Code, legalized the harsh treatment of slaves as property, young Louverture inspired kindness from those in authority over him. His godfather, the priest Simon Baptiste, for example, taught him to read and write. Impressed by Louverter, Bay de Liptad, the manager of the Breda plantation on which Louverter was born, allowed him unlimited access to his personal library. By the time he was 20, the well-read and trilingual Louverter spoke French, Creole, and some Latin, had also gained a reputation as a skilled horseman and for his knowledge of medical herbs and plants. More importantly, Louverture had secured his freedom from de Liptad even as he continued to manage his former owner's household, personnel, and to act as his coachman. Over the course of the next 18 years, Louverture settled into life on the Breda Plantation, marrying fellow Catholic Suzanne Simon and parenting two sons, Isaac and St. Jean. The events of August 22, 1791, the Night of Fire, in which slaves revolted by setting fire to plantation houses and fields and killing whites, convinced the 48-year-old Louverter that he had to join the growing insurgency, although not before securing the safety of his wife and children in the Spanish-controlled eastern half of the island, and assuring that Bayo de Libertad and his wife were safely on board a ship bound for the United States. His military career as a leader of the Haitian Revolution began when he led several negotiations between the rebels and Spain from military supplies. In 1792, Louverture was in charge of a small military unit, but due to his charisma and military acumen, by 1794 he was in command of the largest division of the rebel army, with over 5,000 troops. Everyone was unhappy with the government and the way society was structured. The slaves were tired of being worked to death and being treated as if they were property. The free people of color were still discriminated against and excluded from many legal decisions and had really no say in the government. While the poor white class was also dissatisfied that free people of color were able to gain more wealth and power than them. The struggles led to the petition in 1788 that asked for political rights for free persons of color. Although he was supposedly still part of the French army at this point, Louverture was now the undisputed leader of the Saint Dominique and he was determined to end slavery throughout the island of Hispaniola. 
In December of 1800, he invaded Santa Domingo, modern day, the modern-day Dominican Republic, declaring all slaves free of the island in January 1801. Under a de facto military dictatorship, Louver III brought numerous social reforms to the island. In July of 1801, he passed a constitution for St. Domingo based on the principles and ideas of the French Revolution. The 1801 constitution declared St. Domingo's autonomy, though it ratified its status as a French colony. The constitution granted equality and citizenship to all residents. Louverture's heroic activism aroused the anger of Napoleon Bonaparte and caused Napoleon to send his brother to capture Louverture. Captured in Fort de Jox in French, Louverture died of pneumonia in 1803. His desire for independence would be accomplished a year later by Saint Domingo under his second in command, Jean Jox Desalines. Now it's time for the open letter to Napoleon. Napoleon had plans to reconstruct France's empire in North America that it lost most of during the Seven Years' War. To do this, he needed tons of money from France's most valuable colony, St. Domingue. The best way thought to maximize profits was to introduce slavery. Problems were already bad here. Why you gotta go and make things worse? You could have picked any other colony, but being the money-hungry gringo that you are, chose the most economically profitable one, but at the expense of backbreaking slave labor. To make matters worse, even your brother arrived on the island and tried to take away the slaves' guns, which triggered a guerrilla war in which the French lost. The troops then resorted to genocidal tactics and were ordered to kill as many blacks as possible. Haitian people's biggest weapon was disease, especially ye yellow fever, which killed thousands of French soldiers. That's what you get for killing all the Indians with your AIDS. 